Assalamualaikum and good morning to my fellow friends and our lecturer Dr. Julaida. Today our group will be presenting on railway construction. Our group consists of three people. First is myself, Noshifa Miti Abdul Kudus. Second is Siti Zulaika binti Hamsa. And lastly, Leliana binti Omom. I will be presenting the first slide which is the definition of railway construction. What is railway construction? It is a transfer passengers and goods on wheeled vehicles running on rails. It is also an important part of our transport infrastructure since the 19th century and their development has enabled the use of trains as an effective and efficient means of travel. Tracks usually consist of steel rails installed on ties set in ballast on which the rolling stock usually fitted with metal wheels and moves. A sleeper is a rectangular support which lies horizontally between both rails to which they are fixed. Sleepers transfer loads from the rails to the ballast and the track information as well as maintaining the rail gauge. This type of track tends to be used for short extensions that require additional strength such as in rail stations or in tunnels where maintenance is difficult. Modern rail typically uses hot road still with a profile similar to that of a rounded I-beam. Because of the high stresses to which they are exposed, rails must be manufactured using very high quality steel alloy. Flat bottom rail is the most commonly used due to its stiffness, greater stability and reduced maintenance requirements. Next is planning of railway construction. The first one, a report on site survey is needed for its location and surrounding of site. The second one is a schedule of work that includes activities and time frame for the construction. The third one is providing a method statement that has been approved by the authority. Number four is labor and machineries are needed for the construction to be done. Lastly, local authorities actions and feedbacks are important. There are three types of railway in Malaysia. The first one is meter gauge rail. Peninsular rail, which is an intercity railway network, consists of two main lines. The first one is KTM West Coast Line between Singapore and Padang Besar Perlis on the Malaysian Thai border. The second one is KTM East Coast Line between Gemas in Negeri Sembilan and Tumpat in Kelantan. The second type is standard gauge railway. The first one is Express Rail Link uh, and ERL is the two fastest rail lines in the 57 km standard gauge airport rail link between Kuala Lumpur and Kuala Lumpur International Airport. The second one is Light Rapid Transit LRT. It is a two operational light rail systems in Malaysia used as the major public transport system in the Klang Valley while another acts as an automated people mover at the Kuala Lumpur International Airport to ferry passengers from the main terminal building and the satellite building. The last one is Mass Rapid Transit, MRT, known as Kajang Line, will pass through the city center and will serve densely populated suburban areas. Um, with a total catchment population of 1.2 million people, the Kajang Line entered full revenue service on July 2017. The last type is monorail. Um, it is used for public transport in Kuala Lumpur. It is 8.6 km long, running from Titi Wangsa in the north of central Kuala Lumpur to KL Central just to the south of the city center. It has 11 stations. The line consists of two parallel rails for most of the way except at the end stations where switches merge the two rails into a single rail before entering the station. Next is railway construction process. We have concluded into six steps. The first one is the preparatory work before railway construction. So unlike other type of road buildings such as highway guardrail construction, uh, before we start, the materials such as steel rails, rail fasteners, and the ballast needs to be prepared in advance. <clears throat> the surveying work before railway construction should also be completed before construction. After a simple cleaning of the roadbed, the next step of railway construction can be started. Secondly, lay ballast in the bottom layer. So for the first ballast laying of railway track construction, 
only the bottom layer should be laid, mainly the ballast belt laid in the area below the two rails. The remaining ballasts are transported by trains after the railway line is laid. Thirdly, railway sleeper transport and lane. Due to the current railway track construction, mostly using concrete sleepers, of course the weight is relatively heavy, all need to use machinery for transport. The railway track construction machine lifts the concrete sleeper from the rear container, transfers it to the front cantilever, falls into position, adjusts the position and places it on the ballast. After each railway sleeper is laid, the machine moves forward a section of distance. So cycle to complete the railway sleeper laid. Railroad fasteners such as iron plates, track bolts, uh, rail clippers, uh, and etc. will be pre reinforced on the rail sleeper at this time and will be reinforced again after the rail is placed. Fourthly, track laying. Um, it will still use the railway track construction machine. The machine lifts the steel rail section up and move it to the iron plate which above the railway sleeper. After adjusting the position, the railway track machine put down the rail and continue to lay the next section of rail. At this time, there will be workers operating equipment to fasten the rail fasteners so that the rail is fixed. Fifthly, ballast laying that includes transporting, uploading, tamping, ballast trimming, and other operations. All these processes can be completed by using ballast laying machine with comprehensive working performance. And lastly, other railway constructions uh, that includes after track laying and ballasting, the rail sections need to be fixed to form a stable line. Fish plate and fish bolts uh, are usually used to connect rail sections of ordinary railways. For high-speed railway lines, thermite welding method is usually used to link rail sections. Finally, the large road maintenance machine will carry out mechanical work and carry out final arrangement and inspection of the track. There are seven materials of railway construction. The first one is railway fastening that keeps rail fastened to sleepers and provides a proper slope of rail roof. The second one is rail clip. Uh, it is a boltable, adjustable, self-blocking clip with high clip strength. The third one is steel rail that is used to make rails for railway lines. Number four is rail pad. Uh, it is to reduce uh, fatty cracking of the concrete ties which is believed to be driven by impacts and vibration from the passing train. Number five is the fish plate. It is a metal bar that is bolted to the ends of two rails to join them together in a track. Number six is rail bolt. Uh, it is a mature management system with lower cost which guarantee the quality stability. Number seven, the last one, is rail clamp. It is a device for clamping on rails to prevent or halt the movement of railroad cars past a given point. Next, I will be passing the next slide to Leliana. Thank you. So, the benefit from railway constructions. Firstly, sustainable employment and educational opportunities. Secondly, an environmentally sustainable infrastructure. And thirdly, a uh, new intermodal transport solution for passenger. And lastly, for safety and performance improvements. The challenge in railway constructions. As we know that when you want to do a railway construction, must have a more challenge, which is large number of river, sparse population, and lack of economic viability and hilly terrain where railway track appears through cloud hills, gaps or tunnels and lastly it's difficult to lay railway lines on sandy plain and swamps. Railway maintenance. The maintenance can be divided into two which is preventive maintenance and corrective maintenance. The preventive maintenance has uh, condition-based maintenance and norm-based maintenance. The preventive maintenance in generally is to keep the railway properties in a satisfactory state of service. 
The tasks usually include the task of systematic inspection, identification and correction of incipient faults prior to the creation of major defects. The preventive maintenance can be further divided into two, which is condition-based maintenance and norm-based maintenance. The first one is condition-based maintenance that implies a predictive attitude towards maintenance that can be accomplished by continually monitoring the conditions of an asset and thereby enabling maintenance activities to be initiated only if any possible asset deterioration is detected. The norm-based maintenance is mainly the maintenance activities that are carried out according to expectations and norms. Meanwhile, it is also often time-dependent intervals determined according to reliability measures such as mean time before failure. Next is the corrective maintenance. Practices are very important and require urgent steps that are not permitted to be delayed or cancelled. If only the corrective maintenance is applied, the expense of corrective maintenance is costly and not controllable in terms of specific time and locations due to its random characteristic of failure occurrences. Standard and guidelines related to the railway construction have a two based on international standard and national standard. For the international standard, which is ISO, International Organization for Standardization, and IEC, International Electronical Commission. For the ISO, based on ISO Standard 45 Railway Engineering, and for the IEC, based on IEC 60077 Railway Application, and IEC 60349 Electric Transaction, and IEC 61375 Electric Railway Equipment. For the national standard, only one which is based on law of Malaysia, ACT 463, Railway ACT 1991. The Railway ACT Corporation was set up as a government agency to help grow the rail industry in Malaysia in line with the railway industry in fully developed countries. In additionally, for the IEC 60077, which is railway application, specified the general service condition and requirement for all electric equipment installed in power circuit auxiliary circuit control and indication circuit on railway stock and next is a IEC 60349 uh, which is electric transaction uh, it's referred to the rotating electric devices other than electronic converter driven alternating current motors which are part of electrical power rail and road vehicle and additionally for the last is the IEC 61375 which is a uh, electric railway equipment uh, set out the specification for communication between the onboard subsystem and the ground subsystem. So next, about the safety and health of railway construction. Firstly, wearing complete personal protective equipment such as use eyes and face protections. Example, eyes glasses. For the hand protection, use a glove. And for the head protection, must use a suitable helmet. And for the shoes, you must use a safety shoes. For the scaffolding, all scaffolds should be fully packed. Scaffolds are not artillery. Damaged parts that 
effect the strength of the scaffold are taken out of service and scaffold are not more horizontally well work uh, on them and thirdly is electrical safety all electrical tools and equipment are maintained in safe condition do not bypass any protective system all electrical tools must be properly grounded unless they are of the double isolated type Fourthly, hazard communication each container of a hazard substance is level materials safety data sheets are readily available at all times there is an effective employee training program for hazard substance lastly crane safety restricted from operating within 10 feet of any electrical power line the operator understand and uses the launcher only properly trained and qualified operator are allowed to work uh, next is about the sustainable consideration for the sustainability factor have a two factor environmental and social so for the sustainable performance uh, for the environmental uh, minimize pollution and environmental impact and for the social save travel time and vehicle operating costs The project details, uh, the owner, uh, operator, Pra Sarana Malaysia Behar. The project type, a tram line extension, and the road, Bandar Utama to Johan City. For the road, we can see from, based on the picture, was given. Next is about the construction detail. The project will encompass the construction of a bidet. Elevated station, underground station and tunnel, and depots. The elevated viaducts will be reinforced concrete structure situated on the road median strip and the road side. The viaduct will comprise a substructure and superstructure with the former consisting of pile and pile cap, and the latter consisting of a box girder structure. The elevated station of the project will involve the construction of pile, cap, column and corset. A concourse and platform level will also be constructed. The underground tunnel kite way and underground station will be constructed using the cut and cover method. Excavation will be performed for installation support or retaining the program wall, tunnel, foundation, and base layer. As a conclusion, railway contribute to social vibrancy and economic competitiveness by transporting multitudes of customers and workers to city and inner suburbs. Maintaining and renewing rail infrastructure become a worldwide challenge and increasing performance is required by government and train operators such as more train per hour, longer operating hours and better functionality. On the other hand, it conflict with the increasing budget, pressure and operational restrictions. That's all from us.